it's a really, really hot topic in obviously eating disorder recovery about hypermetabolism. Hi, my name is Tommy Kelly. So guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm actually going to be talking about my eating disorder series and a question I get asked so so much. It's a really really hot topic in obviously eating disorder recovery about hypermetabolism. Basically to let you know what hypermetabolism is, it's basically when you've been suffering from a restrictive background for so so long and starving yourself, you start to eat eat again and actually your metabolism actually revs up and you can be putting in three, four thousand calories and still losing weight. This is really, really can happen and it happens a lot, especially in anorexia nervosa. So like I say, weight restoration is obviously a crucial component in anorexia nervosa treatment. It obviously is a challenging process for a multitude of different reasons, adding to obviously the complexity and the challenge is the fact that during weight restoration, people like myself with anorexia tend to require increasingly more calories to obviously maintain the same rate of weight gain. Basically that is, like I say, the, the, the need to continually increase your caloric intake in steps. It's got to be, it's got to be under a gradual process with an eating disorder recovery team which knows what they're doing. Because if you start just smashing in the calories, the very much chance is that you're going to end up suffering from refeeding syndrome. Basically that is where your body goes into shock because of the caloric intake and it can actually cause you to have a massive heart attack, which actually did happen to myself. So like I say, Basically, technically, it's like kilocalories kilo per kilogram per day to continue gaining weight. For a say, for instance, such as an individual, say, such as 45 kilograms, say, may need about 4,500 plus calories to obviously continue gaining 1 to 1 1.5 kilograms per week, which is roughly 2.2 to 3.3 pounds a week. Because that's really the the do recommend an eating disorder recovery, especially in the hospital setting that you're gaining about a kilogram a week. Sometimes it's roughly about that in the community setting, but this is just a kind of rough guideline. So, like I say, studies have basically found it that the rest in expend energy expenditures, which was R E E equations, tend to overestimate caloric needs at the beginning of refeeding, but underestimate them in the later stages. So like I say, after achieving a healthy weight, people like myself with eating disorder recovery still typically need to eat obviously more calories to maintain the new healthy weight that you've got. Like I say, more than healthy individuals are the same weight who don't have obviously eating disorder histories usually eat at least 50 to 60 calories per kilogram of body weight per day which is roughly say 2,500 to 3,000, like, they recommend roughly 2,000 for a woman, 2,500 for a man, but that's just kind of based on the, the average person. So if you're a very active person, or you've got a very demanding job, you're going to need probably a lot more. So like I say, this hypermetabolic period tends to last between three to six months after weight restoration. Basically, I say, I don't want to... I don't want to be too clear that studies obviously in metabolic rates, caloric requirements and weight gain vary widely in their results. Let's see, according to some studies have shown that individuals with obviously eating disorders, anorexia nervosa, need to consume at least 5,000 upwards extra calories to gain a kilogram a week, whereas others who have suggested that the number is closer to 9,750, things like that. But I see that's a big massive range, so that I see there is a lot of different topics saying this. You can see 10 studies that have said one side of the, the, the coin and then another 10 that say a different study. You've basically got to find out what works for you and obviously done carefully, like I say, with your GP and your eating disorder recovery team to kind of monitor what you gain weekly and obviously that you're getting the right amount of calories as well. I say this may be due to obviously a lack of differentiation with, between anorexia and nervosa subtypes and obviously small sample sizes. But I say exercise can lead to a, a free a threefold range in, in the amount of calories that obviously people with anorexia and nervosa need to gain and maintain weight kind of weekly as well. 
So I say this is at least in part due to the higher calorie needs of lean body mass among anorexia patients who engage in ex excessive exercise. So like if you're someone that suffers with exercise athletica and things like that, that can be a really big part and obviously hampering your recovery and why you may need a lot more calories than the normal person that's got eating disorder, anorexia, whatever type of eating disorder they have, whether it be subtype or whether it be even what I say, even bulimia and things like that. It's it's all different calories for different weights and bodies. So like I say still what, what might explain the increased caloric requirements during refeeding. The most obvious obviously answer is of course weight gain itself. As I say, individuals gain weight, they require more calories to obviously maintain that weight. Gaining, let's like say, one calorie, kilogram of fat requires more calories than obviously gaining one kilogram of fat-free mass. Let's like say 9,300 versus 5,300 calories. So there you go, a big, a big range. Let's like say if we're going to keep gaining more fat du mass during the latter stages of the feeding process, then you would obviously require more calories to gain one kilogram. So like I say, overall the body composition data seems to suggest that at least 50% and maybe perhaps more of weight regained is fat tissue. This conclusion is obviously supported by the fact that the average excess number of calories required to gain one kilogram of body weight in the studies where it was 7,462, which is approximately the average of 9,300 and 5,300 calories required for gain of one kilogram of fat and protein, respectively. So like I say, it may, or it may be that the initial low body weight and percent body fat predispose anorexia nervosa, basically patients to gain more lean tissue than the fat early in refeeding. Like I say, as we obviously approach a more normal weight and things like that, later in obviously the refeeding stages, more fat than lean tissue is obviously gained. But don't worry about this, it all, all balances itself out and your body's got a set point weight. So trust itself, hit knows what is best for you and your recovery. Your body is, is your body's main source is to keep you alive and do what it needs to do. And this is vital in it. I know it's very, very difficult and it's hard to get round this but this is really needed and you can't recover without it unfortunately. Like I say as well, in addition to the weight gain there's also the fact that patients with anorexia and nervosa appear to be metabolically indeficient. Let's see, evidence obviously suggests that individuals like myself eating anorexia and nervosa convert more energy to heat as opposed to obviously building tissue than, than do healthy people controls basically. Let's say clinical experience is that uh, anorexia and nervosa patients obviously complain of becoming hot, hot and sweaty during nutritional restoration, particularly during the night, which I have done very much so myself. It's like a night sweat. That's one of the very much signs that you're you're suffering from this metabolic problem, basically. Let's say it's obviously not uncommon that we'll obviously wake up sweating and the sheets are obviously soaked and things like that. This kind of notion is obviously supported by studies that the thermical effect of food is that anorexia and nervosa patients such as myself during re-nutrition is obviously high. Let's say 63, 65, 66 representing up to the 30% of energy expenditure instead of the 14 to 16% in healthy controls which is 67. And then beginning, particularly high at the beginning of the refeeding, which is 65, so this is the kind of high temperatures that you get, basically. Let's say some studies have obviously found that people like myself, basically with binge and purge, require obviously fewer calories than anorexia, and patients like myself who obviously don't. According to the Sunday in Halmai in 2003, they said that findings have been due to differences in lean body mass versus fat mass on admission. Individuals, they said, obviously proportionately more lean body mass will obviously require more calories to gain and maintain weight compared to those who obviously start out with pre-proportionately more fat mass. Another study said in Stoddy, in 1997 and Walker in 1979 had found that patients with a history of obesity tended to need fewer calories to get, to obviously gain and maintain weight compared to patients with a history of obviously obesity. 
Despite, like I say, decades of research, we obviously still don't know all the much about like, the metabolic changes during and immediately after refeeding. There's obviously a lot, lot more research to be done, but like I say, for now, obviously, you obviously have to look at some practical suggestions regarding nutritional rehabilitation and weight gain. Like I say, caloric requirements for weight restoration in people like myself with anorexia nervosa are obviously best determined by monitoring your individual rate of weight gain. Like I say, given this obviously dynamic process as well, caloric requirements may have not obviously been recalculated if weight gain is not being achieved as expected during obviously your refeeding process. Like I say, ultimately as well, the process of refeeding obviously progresses and ideally the body weight is achieved very high levels obviously, caloric intake may be obviously temporarily and necessary in some cases, let's like say up to 70 to 80 kilograms uh, calories sorry, per kilogram of body weight to obviously promote ongoing weight gain. Let's like say it's obviously been it's been recently elucidated that refeeding a, a patient with anorexia nervosa during obviously the uh, maybe associated with an actual increase in resting REE, which is during the weight pro gain process. But I say, although the mechanism and is a basically a phenomenon as it's presently unknown, its clinically implications are obviously quite clear. Like I say, unusually high caloric diets may be obviously necessary to provide continual weight gain towards the end of the weight restoration process. But I say, a plateau in the desired rate of achievement of a weight patient's target weight may be obviously observed because of underestimation of caloric needs during the, the late, late stages of weight restoration due to obviously the aforementioned change in the REE value. So like I say, to obviously obtain the best chance of long-term weight maintenance recovery, like I say, we should basically persist with an increased and obviously varied caloric intake treatment plan. So I hope this is kind of explains a bit about hypermetabolism and what we actually need to do and things like that. If you if you or anybody that you know has actually suffered with this, please comment below, start the conversation going, let me know if you would like any more on this. I will do it guys. Like I say, I've got a lot of knowledge on these type of things, I've suffered them myself, I've done a lot of obviously parliament for these studies and things like that that I'm, do that I'm talking about here. So. I hope you liked this video and I hope this has kind of helped you in some way and I'll speak to you all in the next video. And remember that the little guy at the end of the video says he knows best. Remember guys, binge on life, purge negativity and starve guilty feelings. Speak to you all soon and love you so much.